are very lucky because today I will tell you what the purpose of your life is. <laughs> To increase the trust in what I'm going to say, I will quote something from His Holiness the Dalai Lama, because otherwise it's just Stefan Pende. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, His Holiness uh, from, from a book uh, called uh, The Heart of Meditation. And he starts uh, this teaching with, I have great interest in the statement by many wise persons in all the orders of Tibetan Buddhism that their systems come down to the same final principle. And I feel that this is what I should and must explain. Such an exploration may be controversial but in any case, these great scholar yogis say that all these systems come down to the same final basic insight, the same principle. Because there is indeed a final basic experience on which they all alight. There is no way they would say, there is no way that they would say this just to be polite. Once there must be such a place of coming together, what is it? So what is it? And this is what this book is about. What is it? It's actually not an it, but uh, The, the undertitle of this book is The Recognition of Innermost Awareness. So, what is it? Innermost Awareness. So, Innermost Awareness is, is a word. <coughs> There's many different words. I have been using natural awareness in the recent uh, evenings. And I repeatedly said, it's undescribable. So that's why <coughs> the question, what is it? it, you know, it's already a little bit too much, the it. It's not, it's not a something. It's, no, it's nothing findable as an object. Nevertheless, somehow, this is what according to this quote of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, the experience of it is what the Tibetan tradition is about. That's the transmission within the Tibetan tradition. And there's a lot of stuff, a lot of other practices and teachings and so on and so on, but they are all preparation, they are all they are all supporting when it's done in a good way, in a healthy way. They are all supporting the recognition of it. Innermost awareness is the translation from uh, Jeffrey Hopkins of the Tibetan word Rikpa. And maybe it's good to stick with a word like Rigpa because we don't know what it is. We don't know what Rigpa is. So we can build up a mental image. So there's more, more space for something new to come into. You know, when we hear something like innermost awareness, we already have some association. We feel, ah yeah, I know what he, he kind of, I know what I'm talking about. But you can't know what I'm talking about because I don't know what I'm talking about. You can't talk about this. It's undescribable. So if, I, if you use a word like innermost awareness and you think, ah oh, yeah, I know, I, I know what he means. You're 100% wrong. 
So usually I don't like to use the Tibetan words, but maybe tonight I will use Rigpa, not natural awareness. Uh, many Tibetan lamas actually would say that the transmission of natural of of innermost awareness of Rigpa is the basic principle of all the basic experience or the, you know, the basic principle uh, on which all religious traditions are based on and uh, it makes sense I'm not sure, but uh, it's, it's a good thing, quite quite reasonable to, to think like that. That it is a basic mystic experience, which then is verbalized in different cultures and in different terms. But it's the same as his holiness has the same basic insight, the same basic in insight. And I, s I said in the beginning, you know, kind of jokingly, I'm telling you what the purpose of your life is. I would never dare to do that. Uh, but definitely it's the purpose of my life, so not only deepening my resting as awareness, so shifting my sense of identity to the dissolving my sense of identity into the background, into the knowing container, into the knowing conscious field. Not only that, but finding better ways to share this. This is the purpose of my life. Because I have recognized that any other project will fail. Mm. So when I say, I tell you the purpose of your life, I know for, for many people that's not the purpose of their life, but they are, they are getting there. Because everything else will not work out. Everything will, every, every, every other project will, will not bring you home, will not make you fulfilled, will not bring you into peace. And now I, I'm talking about a kind of peace which is independent from how messy your life is. A, a peace which, is, which has no, a, an unconditioned peace. So any kind of peace or happiness which arises because the weather is good and you have a good job and you have a good relationship, that's not reliable. It's going to pass, you will lose it. So if you put your whole card deck of cards onto, onto that, then you're doomed. Because soon, you don't know when, but soon, maybe tomorrow, it doesn't matter anymore if you had a job or not. So that's why I say that I kind of have a sense that in that beginning, this journey, this stream of consciousness, which now has manifested in this form, uh, at one point, purpose will be of that stream of consciousness to recognize Rigpa, to recognize innermost awareness. And we have an amazing opportunity, all of you, in this life, today, now. This is, I mean, if you, if you read the Buddhist cosmology, it's like impossible to get to, to this moment where we are now. It's, I mean, I, d 
the images they use for uh, it's like uh, so to 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 be able to to be able to sit here and connecting with uh, the way uh, innermost awareness is transmitted within the Tibetan tradition. It's, I mean, you, you can't compare the, the value of that, the preciousness of that, you can't compare to anything. It's, it's like a, a mountain big, like Mount Everest, uh, in jewels, it's, it's nothing compared to this. It's nothing. So there is also a bit of urgency. Uh, without you know, without you know, without increasing the pressure. But. Uh, we have a, an amazing opportunity because we are going to die soon and we don't know where our unhealthy patterns will, will lead us or will lead not us but this stream of consciousness to manifest. This could be a, a, a source of a deep joy every day for you. Even if your life is a really mess and you, and you, wa you wake up in darkness every morning. But, but, but you made this connection and within a few seconds you can click somewhere on, your, on any of your devices and you can connect with the style of teachings which fit your interests, your preferences, with, with whom you are connected with. Every day you can do that. This was never like this before. Never. So in a way, if your life is a mess and you have a lot of unresolved issues, it's not really important. It, it is important, and, and of course there's many things we can do to lessen the intensity of our pain. So it is important, but not really. It's not really important. If, you, if, you're, if your life is a mess, you don't have less less opportunity to make this little journey and it's a tiny little journey and it can be done only now it can be done only now it can't be done tomorrow it can be only done now when in one year when you are maybe in a better or in a worse place you don't know it's the same journey doesn't matter from where you start. If you're in a better place, sometimes it's a bit easier, but, but it doesn't matter. You, you can do this journey in hell. So one of the instructions for kind of the sitting practice of this sitting practice of natural meditation or non-meditation, non-controlling meditation, non-interfering meditation, non-fixing meditation, non-judging meditation. So one of the instructions to explore here is allow this moment to be what it is. Relax. Allow. So in, in our first meditation, I, I want to make this invitation with different words. So this allowing is very radical. It's actually not something you do. It's more like the sky 
is just open. The sky does not need to allow the cloud. The allowing and the arising of the, of the cloud happens at the same moment. So it's not like, okay, oh, there is something, now I need to allow it. No, it's already allowed because it is already there. And your responses to that, which is already there, they are also allowed. They are already allowed. So then maybe you notice, oh, I have resistance to, and I'm supposed to allow it. And then, you know, so that, that's like the conflict starts, the inner war, with you wanting something else than what is happening. So this allowing is, is really like, yes, yes. But not like, oh, there is something and then yes. No, it happens at the same moment, the yes and the appearance. And what it is doesn't matter. So if there's not allowing, then you allow that. I can't allow this. I don't want to allow this. Then you allow that. So when we play with this, when you, when we, when you relax, when you explore, what does it mean to do nothing. Well, what does it mean to sit here effortlessly? What does it mean if I don't add or take away from what is happening right in this moment? If I if I connect or if I recognize that my heart is like a sky and that in that big wide heart everything can be, everything is loved, everything is accepted. In the moment it appears, not as a second step, And nothing is excluded. On a more relative level, you know, just to make this a bit more interesting for those who didn't connect with what I just said. One of the fundamental Buddhist insights which you need to check out yourself is that we suffer because we resist what is happening. So this is something you know for you to check. How much, or if this is a bit too radical for you, you could also ask yourself how much of my suffering is actually created through the fact that I want things to be different. Mm -hmm. I want different feelings. I want different thoughts. I want a different girlfriend. So, and, and this is really, I mean, this is something every one of us can observe. You know, this, is, you know, this is kind of a fact. So everyone will find find that, that at least we contribute to our suffering through the systems. So what that means is, when we relax the resistance and we open our heart to what is, our suffering reduces. And this is something we can, we can observe. This actually also happens when you are really in a in a contracted state, and someone hugs you and holds you and says, it's okay, I know it's difficult, but it's okay. And there's, ah, and what is that? It's, it is the reduction of the resistance. It's just like, yeah, it's okay, yeah, so, and then, whew, then things start to move. Yeah. 
you, just, you start to cry and some energy is released and and and, and so the, the 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 being in hell which is created through this contraction around and wanting things to dif different and complaining and blaming and and so on and so on it's just like oh, give me a break you know? and then suddenly something can move So when I now, uh, you know, lead you a bit into a sitting, quiet sitting, let's not take it, let's not call it meditation. Yeah. It's, too, it's too heavy, that word. Uh, there's also, I, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing you need to learn. It, it's completely, I mean, it doesn't matter if you have never sit quietly kind of meditated or if you have done it for 20 years actually if you have if you if you have done it for 20 years maybe you're in more trouble because you have trained depending on the tradition where you practice you have trained that meditation is about controlling the content of your experience directing the breath directing the attention doing this doing that blah 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 yeah so, so sometimes uh, Someone who has no idea, <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of okay. So let's see, doing nothing. That sounds easy. Yeah, I'm doing that already. <laughs> so, it's already happening. So yeah, I can just sit here and see what happens. That was the Sorry. beginning bell, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's try. Yeah, I've tried. <laughs> 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 yeah, so try to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So try to be here. <laughs> try to be in the present moment. Yeah. It's silly. It's silly to try to be in the present moment because this is all there is. It's happening. The work is done. Be here now. It's like a joke. So you can. Uh, Either close your eyes or keep them open and take some time to allow a shift to happen from the head into the body, from the doing into the being. yourself to slide into a place of no pressure. Just noticing and that noticing is effortless. If you find yourself stabilizing with the breath or with your hands, that's fine also. So these are movements which happen because you have done them before, so that's fine. Senses are open.
if you notice that you try to push something away or try to attain something, that's fine also. You can let that come and go. can appreciate how this moment happens by itself. You don't need to add to it, you don't need to take away. It's arising, doing its thing and passing away by itself. Being, being here, not knowing where here is. Being yourself, not knowing who you are. Meditating with a heart like the sky. Thoughts continue to come and go, but they are not important. good enough. There's nothing you need to understand. There's no problem to solve. yourself to find a place of rest in the midst of the experience. yourself be meditated by the field of awareness which we share from heart to heart.
Gutes tun. There's nothing wrong with you, and there's nothing wrong with this moment. It is already what it is, and it can't be different. And you have everything to be complete in this moment. thinking. nothing wrong with you. You can let go now. You're safe. yourself how wonderful everything is happening itself. beyond, beyond.
just being here effortlessly. do this right or wrong, you can really relax. the natural peace of this exhausted mind. get away from this and you can't get closer. This is it. It's happening to nobody.
for all the words uh, and pointers uh, I, which came out now uh, they are all what you could call glimpse practice I've talked about that before uh, that the recognition of innermost awareness for most of us it happens for short moments for short moments where the gap opens of the conditioned mind of the of the clouds so i kind of the, the clouds open and 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 you become the sky So it's not like something to practice, it's something kind of to listen to and like a poem or like a piece of music and then and then notice uh, you know, what the response is in you. And then if you do that a while and you listen to different kinds of instructions, you will find your own, you, know, you will find the words or the images which help you or which facilitate this little tiny journey it's not really a journey but obviously there's a difference of sitting here contracted complaining uh, blaming or you know blaming yourself or the teacher or the room or the temperature or uh, and and feeling very solidly I in that you know, so that contraction and then so that's that's one possibility and the other possibility is to relax to shift into a transparent boundaryless centerless way of being here so from from a ultimate point of view these two states are not different but from the subject of experience one can say uh, there is there is this little journey I'm, I'm not it's not a journey at first there's nobody on that journey but also it's not like a journey to another place it's more a journey to it's, it's more a shift it's more a journey into being here in a in a different way not that your experience changes but the way you hold your experience changes and it's good enough if there's a bit of release just a tiny little bit it's, I mean it's a different of being in hell or experiencing anxiety so appreciate that appreciate the move out of hell into feeling miserable and, and then if you have done that little journey from from hell into just being miserable well then you know yeah it's possible if i can do that maybe i can move from miserable to 90% miserable yeah. and then if you have done that and you have done it through doing nothing you have done it by just sitting here just bringing the body here and listen to a few words so th then wow then you know wow yeah that's that's where I want to go there's more there's more room for expansion there I don't know how long it takes, but yeah, so that's a safe direction. So these instructions, they are not, uh, they are not meant to give you, in a way they are not instruction because they don't contain uh, the, the expectation that you do something. 
what that you like what they ex they they are they are not supposed to trigger this idea there is a way to do this right or wrong and if that happens so then you know okay so this is i i just let that pass there is nothing to do there's really nothing to do i i'm already here So glimpse practices, you know, short moments, and then also appreciating that there's like dip different depth, you know, a different kind of depth into this. So there is, uh, you feel a bit of, exactly if someone hugs you like this. But then, or sometimes, or sometimes when things come together in a certain way, or you know, I don't know, yeah. So sometimes, sometimes, then you know you have you feel, you, you 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 experience how. no problem to solve. There's no problem to solve here. So what is here if there's no problem to solve? Of course you can think about your problems. You can call them. invite all our problems from the past and the future <laughs> and trying to solve the problems in the past and trying to solve the problems in the future it's so silly that we do that so the so this the, the journey this little journey I'm talking about We work only with what is here. We work only with reality. So then you might think, yeah, just a moment, but I need to solve my future problems. I need to I need to fix my past because I still have hope for a better past. <coughs> I still have hope for a better past. And it's irresponsible not to try to solve the problems of the future because then everything will fall apart. So now you need to trust me a little. <laughs> I hope I was, so far I was reasonable. I guess <laughs> some of you know me quite well, so uh, maybe I have a bit of a that you at least consider what I say. <laughs> so, the best preparation for the future problems is to be here with love. Because the, the knowledge to handle certain situations through life experience, it's there, it's there in you, it will be there also in the future. 
You, do, you don't need to draw upon it now. This helps me so much in teaching. You know, like when I started uh, many years ago, for a few years I, I needed to prepare. You know, think about it, make a plan, what I'm going to say, write some things down. And then suddenly, kind of, I, I realized, hey, what I'm doing now, I can also do then. Why I'm sitting here now, drawing on my resources, drawing on my experience, and making a plan for a future moment. Getting all stressed out about a situation which is imagined and will never be like that. It will never be like that. Maybe I'm dead. Or different kinds of people come. I'm late, why? So, so and th that was like, ah, oh, I do my preparation now. <laughs> so this is like, you know, play with that a bit. Of course, I'm not saying you know, we have a wonderful planning mind, and I also book flights. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't go to the airport. <laughs> so, so it's now. <laughs> it's now. It's the flight to Vienna today. <laughs> of course not. But. Uh, you know, we have so much just compulsive, crappy, shitty, unnecessary kind of thinking, which does not add to any kind of creativity or problem solving. Or it's, it's just garbage. I mean, really, I don't know. I think I, I actually saw some numbers somewhere. Someone, someone counted the thoughts we have in one day. I don't remember how many, <laughs> something like 30,000 or something like that. And, and then they, made a, they, 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 they researched it and they came up with a number that 99% of these thoughts are repeti repetitive. Isn't, isn't, I mean, it's so boring. <laughs> no, sometimes people say, Thoughts are like clouds coming and going. They are not like clouds. They are more like bricks, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the same. You know? Like clouds, they change, they move, they are different. So we are like, ah, again. <laughs> again, the same clouds, again. <laughs> so it, now I, I've, of course, as often, I, I talk a bit of an ideal you know, to, to, to grow into, because this will continue out of habit. So it's just, you know, starting, you know, it's, it's like a start to maybe every day uh, to take this time of sitting quiet. And it doesn't matter where you sit. You can also stand or walk, so you don't need to, you know, do it in a formal way, but, 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 so, but some time every day, maybe divide it in, in certain periods throughout the day, that would be wonderful, so that you bounce back to doing nothing, just being in the present moment, uh, and then increasing the the glimpse practices which which are helpful for you so the like so w w how can you facilitate this little journey this journey doesn't take i mean it it's, it, it takes a split of a second and it can be done everywhere in your office uh, while watching something while going for a walk while 
why being in the fitness center, why being in a conversation with a person. So it's it's independent from where you are. You don't you don't make it you don't need to make it into an event like a meditation session, you know, where you kind of you blow it up a bit into something special. Uh, it's very ordinary. Nobody notices. It's very it's very modest and quiet. Nothing dramatic. It's just being here and appreciating this. And uh, and exploring the trust into that being here with love, with kindness, is the best preparation for tomorrow. Mm. Because when you are here with, when you're just here, with love, with kindness, tiny little bit love and kindness. You know, if you feel like, oh, I can't love this, you know, but tiny little bit, a little bit more softness around your experience. So then that little softness around your experience, it becomes e more easy accessible for you, of course, because your, your mind becomes familiar with it. And it wants to go there. I mean, the body and mind feels much better in, in, in this soft, less contracted state. So, and then tomorrow, when you have the conversation, or when you have uh, you know, something difficult coming up, then you can, you bring that. You bring that with you. It becomes more and more the default state of being. And then if it becomes more the default st state, you are much more in connection with your resources, with your creativity, with your joy, with your kindness, with your intelligence, with the intuition, what's the best to do instead of sitting here and stressing out with planning. I know it's difficult to trust because I'm talking about a completely different way of living. It's trusting what in the Buddhist tradition you would call it, trusting Buddha nature. It took me like, I mean just in this little part of my life of teaching, it took me like 14 years of relaxing into this. So we have a break, uh, but before the break I want to say one thing and then explain a little bit more after the meditation. And that is, out of pedago pedagogical reasons, in the Buddhist tradition, initially Rigpa and the condition level of mind, which is in the Tibetan language is called Sen, so the condition level of your mind is, you know, that what, what we usually think of mind, like the stream of sense data and what the conceptual mind does with it. Moving, often contracted, often in a state of suffering, in a state of stress. So that's the condition level of mind or sen. And probably all of you have come across the, the, this image of the clouds in the sky. So the sky, Rigpa, the clouds, Sen, conditioned, coming and going, arising out of conditions, doing a little dance and dissolving back into the sky. So, but this is, it makes sense to talk about conditioned and unconditioned mind as if they are two different things, but they are not. They are not. 
So when we talk about Rigpa, it's not like Rigpa is something behind this. You know, something like we need to push the clouds away, which is what you see, what you feel, what you think. And then you push and you push and you calm down and you heal and then you will find Rigpa. No. This is not how it is. This is it. There is nothing behind this. We don't need to dig. No, you know, go beyond or you know, find a place of rest. And these instructions make sense, but they are not the they are not the most profound approach to this. It's a here one the the, the image of the ocean and the waves. Uh, make sense. So imagine a shoreless ocean and waves coming and going. So the waves, they are Sam. They are the conditioned, they are the conditioned mind. The display of your karma from the Buddhist point of view. It's moving not, not because someone else is to blame, it's moving because it has causes and conditions coming together. So that's why it's moving. So now, Rigpa is the water. Yeah? So there's the wave and here's the wave. And there's little waves in you happening and little waves in me. And Rigpa is the water. So now we have found that the Holy Grail is water the water of life, the water which really quenches your thirst, which bring you into a place of no more seeking, in a place of peace, in a place into a place of love. So, and then you feel, oh, yeah, there's waves, but where's, where's the water? Where's the water? So we feel like we need to straighten out the wave. You know, get rid of the anxiety wave, get rid of the depression wave, get rid, get rid of all these thoughts which disturb our meditation, get rid of certain people in our life, get rid of our job. You know, the whole thing is just it, because there must be something behind. <coughs> You know, God must be behind all of this. I, I, I get even, I mean, I get a little nervous when I'm saying this. But this is it. Give up the hope of a better future. This is it. And nobody can give you this. You don't need to go anywhere. Okay, so let's have a break. <laughs> I need a break. <laughs>